how well do you understand the viewer? How well do you understand who you're serving? If you think I'm just blowing smoke, please keep ignoring it because this is the game. Getting started on YouTube and knowing what order to do the steps in can be challenging. If you're brand new to the platform and you're not really sure where to start or how to get going other than just start making videos, well then this is the episode for you. My name is Heather Torres and I'm your host of the Think Media Podcast, the number one podcast to help you grow your influence on YouTube and then take that influence and turn it into a high impact and a high profit YouTube channel. And on today's episode, we're gonna be diving into a two part series. Over the next two weeks, we're gonna be breaking down the four steps to building a six figure YouTube channel. I don't know, do you want a six figure YouTube channel? Well, then this is the one for you. Over these next two episodes, we're gonna be splitting up one of the talks from last year's Grow With Video Live. We have our conference coming up in just a few weeks or days, depending on when you're listening to this. And we wanted to give you a behind the scenes, a sneak peek of the type of content you'll get at Grow With Video Live. On today's episode, we're breaking down step number one and two, and then next week we'll dive into step three and four. Let's get into today's featured content. And then after that, I'll come back on and let you know what you can expect for next week. We're gonna be talking about rethinking YouTube. Four steps for rising above recession and building a six to seven figure online business with YouTube. If we're just meeting, um, I'm the co-author of the number one best-selling YouTube strategy book in the world, YouTube Secrets, and my passion is helping people get results with YouTube. These are a few of our Video Raking Academy students that hit that silver play button target. But you know, there is so many different definitions of success on YouTube. It could be that you want to get your silver play button. It could be that you want to get your gold play button. It could be that you just want to create a lifestyle of freedom or just build a tight knit community. There's so many different goals. And here's the thing, as we look up here, I, have, I want you at the start of the session to be thinking different about YouTube. You got to think different about YouTube. And here's what I mean. This session is titled the business of YouTube. I want you thinking different. If right now you go, oh, is this just for business owners? No, we all need to be thinking like business owners. There's something about changing our mindset from just being an amateur in our approach to YouTube to being a professional. There's something about changing our mi mindset from just dabbling in YouTube to dominating. There's something about changing our mindset from just kind of treating YouTube like a hobby to treating your YouTube channel like a media company. You know, Jay-Z said, uh, I'm not a businessman. I am a business, comma, man. Like, you're not a businesswoman. You are a business. And when you change your approach to YouTube, I think that's the foundational mindset that we need as we get into these four strategies. And really, we've seen over the last decade that this is a real career, the ability to establish yourself on social media platforms like YouTube, find out ways to monetize, and there really is a process and an approach to that, and we're gonna be breaking that down in this session. Now, these are actually the first four steps of our framework we're gonna go through at our Growth Video Live conference over the next couple of days on 10 steps for building a six to seven figure media business. I kind of make, I think about this as like moves in chess, right? Like you, you need to make the right move at the right time and you need to be thinking about which move are you gonna make next and what are the 10 moves of building a high profit and high impact business that helps people. We're gonna go through the foundational ones right now, but write this down and if you haven't grabbed a journal yet, get a journal, number one, this is the first step in building a six to seven figure business and going full time on YouTube is positioning. You need to claim and master your topic. Claim and master your topic. Tell me in the chat, tell me in the comments, what is the topic or the niche that you have picked on YouTube? But we're gonna ask some powerful questions here. Your, your niche, if you will, your niche, we just had Chris Ducker earlier in our Grow Video Live sessions, and uh, he was over in London sharing. And you know, niche is actually how you say it. But here in America, we say niche. If you've ever heard marketers say the riches are in the niches, you know, it kind of rhymes. 
You say the reaches are in the niches? Is that, okay, bad joke. I'm a dad by the, I'm about to be a dad, so the dad jokes might come out a lot in this session. Literally, my wife sitting in the room is minutes away from giving birth. It might even be something that happens during this session. Uh, we'll see. But, but what are you passionate about, like positioning? These questions are gonna kind of be like, at the intersection of these questions is, is where you wanna plant your flag and claim and master your topic. What problem do you solve? What problem do you solve? What can you do to help people? You know, in 2020, it's been a, a crazy year, and I love that video that the Think Media team and Tony Ariola did to open up uh, Grow With Video, this kind of conference. 2020 has been crazy, and our heart goes out. We've had so many personal friends and family friends that have been so affected by the pandemic. Uh, we've lost people. Like, we've lost people we know and that we love. We've seen businesses disrupted. Of course, we're going through civil disruption. We're going through health and economic crisis and political crisis. It's a crazy, crazy time right now. But here's the thing. If you're watching this stream, you got to realize the world's got problems, right? But you're called to solve problems. And did you know that we can use video to help people, to serve people, to solve problems. You know, entrepreneurs just solve problems for a profit. That's what really entrepreneurs do. And guess what? The world has got more problems now, and that's why you gotta rise up and start sharing answers, just sharing your way of doing it. You gotta claim and master your topic. The world's got problems. Your boyfriend has got problems, right? Your in-laws have got, okay, you, there's problems to solve in the world right now, right? And so what can you do right now to help people with video? I think about the fact we're living through one of the greatest mental health crises the world's ever seen. It makes sense because of the lockdown and job disruption and whatnot. Man, we have the, the possibility with YouTube to encourage, to educate, to uplift, to entertain, to help people de-stress. It's a powerful opportunity. How can you help people? What do you have results in? If you're gonna claim and master your topic, you gotta be committed to getting real results and simply helping other people get results. Sean, do I have to be an expert? No. Do I have to have gone to school for this? No. It's kind of crazy that this small town kid, college dropout, grew, in a, uh, grew up in a city more like a town, it's a city now called Arlington, Washington, right? And so like farming and agriculture was like our mode of operation. And I grew up in a small town and, and was able to just start making videos in my bedroom and now be having some of the results. And I, mean, I saw that opener video. I'm like, who even is that? Like, what has happened in the last few years? But that's the power of online video. I never went to film school. Like, all I've ever, I've, I've always invested in my learning and my education, but no one ever one day said, Sean, you're officially ready to start. You know what? You have permission now to start a YouTube channel. No, I had to just punch fear in the face and start, not get permission from anybody else, but choose myself and just get on camera and overcome that imposter syndrome, overcome that fear. And so, but I had results because I've been building it up over the years. What do you have results in? What have you been doing? What, do you, what have you invested in? What do you have results in? And then how can you stand out in a crowded market? How can you be different? And then what will people pay you for? This session is about making you money, right? This is, I, I love that th it's po possible to have YouTube be a hobby, have YouTube be a channel where we can just share our passions and build communities. That's great if that's your ambition. But if you look at the title of this very video in this session, this is a proven path to building a six to seven figure business. So if you don't answer these questions at the foundation of your journey, then it's gonna be potentially a hard ro road of reaching full-time freedom, of reaching that goal of going full-time on YouTube. So it's a good question to say, what will people pay you for? And people will pay for a lot of things, but you gotta kinda know up front, like eventually, do you plan on writing a book? Are you gonna do an audio book? Are you gonna do some kind of an e-commerce thing? Are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? What will people pay you for? So screenshot, we'll put them up one more time. Screenshot these questions, dial in these questions. This is that positioning question, some foundational 101 questions. And then finally, what business do you wanna be in? What business do you want to be in? That could be that, you know, I ultimately wanna be a YouTuber YouTube influencer and I need to get a lot of views because I need YouTube AdSense. It's actually not my recommended path because that's a very unstable business model. Even depending on something like brand deals, also good, but like could be very unstable. They could be up one day, down the other. 
So as we evolve, we want to be thinking, no, what business am I actually in? Building a real media company. Even if you got a brick and mortar business, you are a media company. You are a business, comma, man, right? Like what business do you want to be in? And we'll go more into that as we go throughout this. Uh, this is Jennifer. She recently hit 50,000 subscribers. And she, her YouTube channel is Sewing Crafts and DIY. And she went full time on YouTube actually a while ago now and has been able to do that because of helping solve the problem of people finding budget sewing machines, knowing how to use their sewing machines, uh, learning how to sew in different techniques. She makes money through affiliate marketing, YouTube ads. She continues to scale up. She uses brand deals. She, it's a good example of positioning and a good example of picking a specific niche and solving a specific problem. This is uh, Sean Chandler Speaks. He is actually, uh, he has a movie review channel and I ran into him at a conference back before the lockdown when we were, we were able to hang out with people, right? And uh, he came up to me. He's like, bro, thank you so much for your content. content. I recently went full time. I joined Video Ranking Academy and like I I've now implemented some of those strategies. And here's one of the strategies. I was like, well, bro, what kind of ways are you making money? And there's a lot of different ways. But for him as a movie review channel, check this out. He did the It, you know, the movie It, right? Stephen King and the book It. So the new It movies come out. And so he does a review of all the It movies on his movie review channel. In the beginning of the video, he just goes, hey, this video is uh, brought to you by Audible. You know, one of the best ways to experience Stephen King's It is to actually listen to the audiobook. And guess what? You can get a free copy of the audiobook if you use my link in the description below. And so check that out. And then he went and does the review of the movies. Well, when someone signs up for a free Audible account, you earn five to $10, depending on what account they sign up for. You get paid if they just do the free trial and if they become a gold or whatever member, you even make more money. And so he made thousands of dollars, even though he was talking about movies by talking about some audiobooks. You gotta figure out what business do you wanna be in? How are you gonna make money? And his positioning though, powerful niche of talking about movies. He's got the Joker up there. He's got Jaws up there, right? And this is Andrew Finney. He's in real estate. So you could do this in any niche. And there's something powerful. He's got a smaller channel, uh, 19,000 subscribers at the time of taking this screenshot, but some powerful breakout videos. It's really built his influence. He's making multiple six figures a year. He's in the top 1% of real estate agents and he's leveraging video and social media to grow his business. I don't care if you want to do coaching, if you're an author, if you're a speaker, if you're in direct selling or network marketing, if you're selling insurance, you've got to be leaning into video, but you got to plant your flag and know your positioning. So what is your niche? What topic? Tell me in the comments. What topic have you committed to mastering? And remember this quote from Sally Hogshead that says, different is better than better. Have you ever felt this way in 2020 and beyond that like, man, there's just so much competition now. Like, like all these, other, these people have already started though. It's too late for me. It's not too late. You know, what's crazy is that in 2010, it wasn't too late, but people thought it was in 2015. It wasn't too late, but people were like, oh man, it's too late. I just don't think I'm going to start my handle yet. And then in 2020, that's the same thing that people are saying. Oh, it's too late. Oh, there's Sean saying the same thing again. He's saying just punch fear in the face. I've heard this before, bro. Good, good, job. good look, bro. I'm going to hit the dislike button on this video to really, well, I appreciate the engagement actually, because even dislikes help raise the video and the algorithm. So please keep them coming. But here's the thing. It's still not too late to start to punch fear in the face and just get going. But Sean, how do I stand out? You got to figure out your difference. How can you be different? And here's kind of more of an advanced strategy when it comes to different is better than better. You might say, well, Sean, what do you even mean by being different? Well, I think about these two. This is Dave Ramsey. Come on, get out of debt, cut up your credit cards and Robert Kiyosaki. I love them both. A couple years ago or over a decade ago, I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Any Robert Kiyosaki fans, anybody read that book? Let me know. How about Dave Ramsey, Total Money Makeover? Come on, Financial Peace University, the get out of debt scream, you know, let's go. And so you've got these two different, what, what are they both teaching? The same thing, Fi personal finance, money, investing, real estate, 
whatever, get, you know, how to invest your money, how to do savings, how to get out of debt, but from two radically different perspectives, right? Radically different. Like I remember I went to a Robert Kiyosaki seminar once and he was talking about how to invest and this, one of his trainers pulled out a stack of credit cards with a rubber band and was like, this is how we're gonna buy and flip homes. I was like, what are you talking about? Dude, Dave Ramsey would have an aneurysm if he just saw what you just did right there. Like my gosh. On the flip side, Dave has this completely like no debt approach, but they're both helping people. They're both serving people but they both are radically different in their perspective. Here's kind of what I want you journaling about right now. What are your values? What are your perspectives? What, are your, what do you believe to be true about the world and about your industry that's different? That's how you really stand out. And what is your polarizing point of view? Because here's what I've learned. People really dislike ri the rich dad, poor dad. And guess what? People really dislike Dave Ramsey. Like, it, you need to get over the fear of people and the fear of other people's opinions because anybody that builds their influence, they're going to have haters, man. Anybody who really steps out and does something, you're going to have people that oppose you and disagree with you. You would actually need an opinion, though, to be disagreed with. Here's the reason why you're not standing out. It's because you're not even actually sharing opinions. If you're trying to please everybody, you're going to end up pleasing nobody. If you try and reach everybody, you're going to end up reaching nobody. You need to pick a side. You need to pick a fight. Both of these guys do. Dave Ramsey doesn't have a problem. Hey, Dave, I'm calling in. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing better than I deserve. That's what he always says. And he's like, uh, you know, what should I do? Should I, you know, I'm thinking about putting a, a new truck on some debt, though. Can you afford it? No, I can't really afford it, Dave, but I'm thinking, I really need a new truck. My other one, he's like, well, then don't buy the truck. He just keeps saying the same thing, and people go, man, his advice is terrible. Another guy that I love, Grant Cardone, completely disagrees with, like, kind of both of them. He's got his own philosophy. The world is big, friend but you need to have your unique perspective, your polarizing point of view to figure out how you're gonna stand out in the world. Zig Ziglar said it this way, don't become a wandering generality, be a meaningful specific. Man, you wanna stand out. This is the first pillar of the 10 pillars. We're gonna cover four in this video. It's your positioning. It's your positioning. You gotta know what you stand for. And watch how practical this can be. A YouTube strategy. You want to position your videos to stand out and get clicks. This goes all the way down to actually specific social media posts and specific videos. So here's one example. This is the Sony ZV-1. Anybody got this camera yet? New camera. We did a video Sony ZV-1 versus the Canon M50. Love them both. Strengths and weaknesses on both sides. A really cool camera. And so this camera comes out, so we start talking about it. We love it. We love the camera. We get our hands on it, though, and I put this video out. This is the first video we released about it. And here's one of the things I noticed was as soon as this camera, there's been no other camera that I've seen, and I've been in the tech thing for a while, that Sony sent this camera out to more people than I'd ever been. So the coordinated effort the day this like, camera came out was just like, there was like a hundred on, on YouTube about it. Like I was, you want to talk about competition. It was just like everybody, like Sony did a really good campaign of getting this camera. We got review units that we have to send back into the hands of tech YouTubers and video creators and things like that. So we get this camera and I'm seeing all these people post videos and I'm like, Dude, there's no, how are you gonna break through the noise on this thing? And everyone was like, this is so amazing. This is the best camera ever. Did Sony finally do it? The vlogging camera that changes everything. And actually all of the thumbnails and titles were overwhelmingly positive. Now, I didn't wanna pick a fight just for picking a fight sake, but here's the PowerPoint that I want you to catch. You gotta figure out, man, how can I be contrarian a little bit? You gotta figure out, how can I kind of stand out amongst the clamor if you want to get your content noticed, your videos noticed? I, I think of this as like the Jesus strategy. I don't know if you ever heard, he'd say like, you heard it said an eye for an eye, but I told you, I tell you the truth, it's actually turn the other cheek. So he would actually say like, man, everybody's saying this, but I'm going to tell you something like the real truth. And so there's something about having a polarizing perspective of of challenging common thought, of going a different direction, not just making something up, but sharing what you really believe. So here's what I was thinking about with the camera, and here's how the video ended up being titled. Best camera for vlogging 2020 question mark. Hint, it's not the Sony ZV-1. And then on the actual thumbnail, besides the red arrow, this is some tactical stuff you can apply now, right? 
ZV1 hype? Because there was so much hype. So I kind of wanted to pick a fight. Type pick a fight in the chat. I'm telling you, you want to grow your YouTube channel faster, grow your influence, you got to pick a fight. And here was my belief, is that this is one of the best cameras for YouTube. So I was like, okay, that is something that I believe. But for vlogging, the lens is not really wide enough in my opinion. Like if you're gonna turn the camera on yourself and you specifically need this camera for vlogging, it's so close, but for vlogging, the lens is not quite wide enough and therefore I recommend other options. So here's the truth of the video. It's an overwhelmingly positive video as I'm telling you right now. Love the camera, but the way I positioned the video, polarizing picking a fight against all the other YouTube videos. And the, the proof is in the pudding. 132,000 views and this one keeps getting views and keeps getting recommended and suggested. Why? Look at the thumbnail, look at the title. It's positioning, my friend. Type positioning if you're watching this in the chat. Here's some of the uh, results we can see there. Video has grown by 640 subscribers. Already made $1,200 in AdSense, right? Of course, there's affiliate marketing and things connected to it. But you can see that blue line and it keeps getting recommended and it keeps getting impressions and it keeps getting suggested because, click through rate, because of that, it's intriguing because it's polarizing. And so here's a polarizing power question for you. What polarizing and provocative titles and social media headlines could you use for your content? The best way to do this is to really tap into what you believe in, to tap into your heart, tap into maybe what you're afraid to share, but what you actually deeply believe. Like, wait a minute. If all the other tech YouTubers are saying it's perfect, I don't want them to not like me. Dude, who cares, man? They're not even watching you anyways. They got enough stuff to do on their own. Well, if everybody else, do, do, who cares about what anybody else thinks? You got to stop worrying about pleasing people and share your polarizing point of view, especially if you really want this thing to work and you want to break out in a crowded and noisy world. And so uh, as this is just tip number one, we got three more tips, uh, three more pillars. What topic though, if you haven't answered the question yet, are you committed to claiming and mastering? Now that you've heard this, the topic that fills in all those questions, what business do you want to be in, right? What are you passionate about? How can you help people? Is it maybe you thinking about how to pivot your plan? We're talking about how to rethink our strategy in 2020 in this new decade. And so what is your topic? Uh, and number two, here we go. Number two, discover your audience's problems and ambitions. These build on each other, step after step, point after point, discover your audience's problems and ambitions. So you've, number one, you know what topic you're in. You know what niche you're in. You've planted your flag. Next question is really discovering your audience's problems and ambitions. Sean, this is too basic. If that's what you're saying, that's why you're going to lose. Sean, like this is the same. Dude, this is the nuance at the highest levels. I was just recently on, a, on, a, on a, a, like a business meeting on a Zoom call. I couldn't even believe I was in the room with some of the most influential entrepreneurs in the world. And I heard a guy that's like at the tip of the top of just business and entrepreneurship share something that was like, discover your audience's problems and ambitions. He said, really the difference maker in success is how well do you understand the viewer? How well do you understand who you're serving? How well do you understand who you're creating content for? And how well are you serving and helping that individual? And do you have a good market message match? If you think I'm just blowing smoke, please keep ignoring it because this is the game. These build step by step. And so on a surface level, I might be like, okay, cool, took notes. Give me a tactic, bro. This is the tactic. This is the foundation foundation of like really building a real business, discover your audience's problems and ambitions. Listen to what Richard Branson said. To succeed in business, you need to be original, but you also need to understand what your customers want. Here's a question. Are you making video content that your viewers actually want? Like, are you creating videos that people actually want to watch. Are you creating content for yourself? Or are you creating content to really serve and help people? Are you putting the viewer first? Here's this deal, if you actually put the viewer first, know what problems they have, share valuable content that's produced in a great way, that solves that problem, why wouldn't you win? <laughs> but here's, here's the beauty of this, because the people that are tuning this out, 
are, are losing. And the people that are actually going in and investing and really thinking about how can, who would have thought serving people, actually solving people's problems, actually helping people, actually getting people results. Wow, it just works in business. It works in life. It works on YouTube. Actually entertaining, actually being worth watching. I'm not saying that's easy to do, but do, does that make sense? Like when you put the customer first, now remember, we're thinking different about YouTube. We're rethinking our approach. Well, I don't really have customers. I have viewers. Well, think about it like a customer. What is a good restaurant? You ever been to a a store back when we could leave the house. Remember that? Uh, have you ever been to a store or like a, like a clothing store or like some sort of a hardware store or something? And you walk in and there's somebody there that's like sitting behind the counter, right? Chewing their gum and they're like on their phone. And it's like, ding, ding, they come. And this is the look they get. They kind of like look at you and they just like look down. They don't even like even wink or like do this or say like, hey, welcome in. And, and, and you're like, uh, you know, they're, they're like twirling their gum looking at their phone. And, and you're over here and you're like, you're picking stuff out. You're like looking at stuff. You keep looking at them. Like, I do have some questions, but they seem busy. Like, can I get a hand? And they don't even ask you, like, do you need help? This happens all the time. Like, this has happened to my wife. She's, we we're about to have a baby. And she was like looking at some baby stuff. And she's like, you wouldn't believe what happened. Literally, I like wanted to spend money. I wanted to give a business money. And people were, these two employees were sitting there just talking amongst themselves, like annoyed that someone was there in the, the store to give the store money. My friends, this is happening more than you would believe in our content. We're creating content just for ourselves. Are we actually there to serve the viewer? Like people want to give somebody money every single day. They do. Like people want to spend money. They want to pay money for things that solve problems. I'm hungry. I want to pay money to get fed. I need some uh, running clothes with some uh, like tank tops and some shorts that don't chafe. Come on, somebody. I want to find some good, well-reviewed shorts. I want to learn some information about how to build my business, save money on my taxes, how to grow a YouTube channel. I want to pay somebody money to go further faster. People want to give you money how to build a six to seven figure business. But you really got to understand your customers, serve and solve their problems, and think about every person that visits your content, your YouTube channel, as a gift. It's a privilege that they walked into your store. It's a privilege that they're perusing your YouTube channel. It's a privilege that you even have the chance to serve that person. My question is, what are you doing with that privilege? Are you treating that privilege with the highest honor? I love this quote. Until you understand your customers deeply and genuinely, you cannot truly serve them. You cannot truly s serve them. So how do you discover your audience's problems? Number one, keyword research is a good way to do it. There's a lot of good videos here on Think Media, and we're going to be talking about that more at Growth Video Live over the next couple days. But keyword research. Why are you creating videos before you've done the research? Like, I wonder what I want to create today, which is fine if that's working for you, great. But what if you actually started with what people were actually asking? Here's a cool tool. It's called askthepublic.com. Watch this. If you look up here on the screen, askthepublic.com, I just typed in leadership. The website is answerthepublic.com, I should say. And you can, uh, you can type in anything you want and it'll bring up questions. I know you can't read these on the screen probably, but I'll read some of them to you. I typed in leadership. So if you're in personal development, leadership, you could type in keto, you could type in tips for moms, you could type in NLP, you could type in taxes, you could type in stocks. This is the questions people are actually, uh, actually asking. Why leadership matters? Why leadership training fails? Why leadership development programs failed? Can leadership be taught? The where, the are, the how, the what? That this is internet data. Like before you just go make videos. And like I'll talk to people a lot, like somebody that's doing leadership, personal development, like I don't know what videos to make. What I'm thinking about talking is I'm thinking about talking about like my secret leadership rabbit formula about how like rabbits, you know, I, I kind of use like a rabbit analogy. I like rabbits. And, like, and I'm like, and, and I'll title the video like how rabbits, and I'm like, dude, bro, why don't you just answer the public? 
Why don't you just answer the questions? They're right here on the internet. These are the questions the public's at. Here's a hundred videos for you to make before you even start worrying about other content to make. And guess what happens when you make these videos is you'll start attracting an audience, especially when you optimize them right and create good content and good thumbnails and all the details, of course. But then you actually get people in your comments. You actually get people on your content and you can start, are leadership and management the same? See, it seems too, too simple. Most people wouldn't a- ask that. Are, leadership, uh, are leaders born or made? There's so many questions on here. One video, one title, one answer when it comes to these powerful questions. That's just one website, answerthepublic.com. So that's one way to do it. Another way is survey and talk to your audience. Survey and talk to your audience. Sean, what video should I make if I really want to discover my audience's ambitions and problems? Here's a tip. Ask. Like, ask your audience what their problems are and how you can help. What videos do they want to see? Now, if you think this is too simple, Think Media is about five years old professionally. Like that's when Heather Torres uh, at the ground road. So Omar El Takori, the early days, we had like Jay and Ron helping us. It's about five years old when this thing was like moving into business mode. But then there was like five years. That was like 2015 to 2020. There was like five years. 2010 was when I uploaded the first video on Think Media to 2015. So there's like five years of just me figuring stuff out, Just probably like most of you can relate, solo creator, no Heather Taurus, no opener video, no lights, no like LED walls, like just grinding. And so you got to know like great things take time and great things take patience and great big things start small. It's like five years. And then there was like years before that where I was even mastering my craft. I was claiming and mastering my topic because I was doing video in my church from 2003 to 2010. So there's seven years where I was learning video, horrible at video. I've selected PAL the first time when I opened up Adobe Premiere instead of NTSC because PAL sounded friendlier. It's like, it sounds like a PAL. And I didn't realize that was the European frame rate. And some of you don't even know what I'm saying. And some of you are laughing at me right now. But in 2003, I was like, okay, how do I start a premier project? What are, the, what are these options? I didn't know what a frame rate was. I just started projects. Things look so janky and sketchy and crazy year over year, step after step. And so you just got to know though that you got to start, you start building that audience, but eventually you will have an audience to talk to and they will tell you what they want to see from you in your content. But here's another one. Read comments. Sean, I don't got any comments. How am I going to read the comments? You want to hack? Check this out. Read comments on other people's content. Man, it's one of the best things you could possibly do because some of the tip top people you're watching are not paying attention. Let me go back to finish that story that I completely got lost in over the years. I've been doing this video stuff now for 17 years. And we, uh, our team at Think Media, we talk in Slack. And so we go back and forth as, as one of the places we talk and then monday.com. And that's where we kind of project manage and organize things. And we're in there. And here's the thing with pillar number two, understand your audience desires. To this day, my friends, 17 years later, I still don't think we've got this. We are still like, I don't think we really fully understand our audience yet. Wow, there is still more questions. We could have more empathy. We could deeply, remember that quote? Deeply understand your audience. How can you deeply and genuinely know the person you're serving so you can serve them? So I'm just here to say, if you've got this one mastered, good for you. We're 17 years into this and we don't even have it mastered. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why we're winning is because we care and we continue to think, man, how can we better serve you, better solve your problems, better figure them out, make the videos you're actually asking for and not the videos we think that we should make. But if you say, well, there's no one there to even survey, guess what you can do? You can read comments on other people's content. Because what you can find is that on somebody else, your, competitor, uh, your competitors, people in your niche, you can check out their content and see, but people go, oh, but I didn't understand that. That's an opportunity for you to make a video. 
Oh, but you didn't really hit this. That's an opportunity to make a video. Uh, I'm not really vibing with that. Like you will get more insight from actually listening and observing than you will from talking and creating all the time. In fact, you have two ears, two eyes, and one mouth so that you can learn twice as much as you speak. Can you think about that? The way God created us? Two ears, two eyes, one mouth. That maybe we should observe more, listen more, absorb more, learn more, so that when we speak, it makes an impact. Well, now it's time to get your journal out and start writing out the answers to the questions that Sean gave you in today's episode. Really think about who your channel is for. What is the outcome you want from your channel? How are you going to help people? And so much more. Go back if you need to get to those questions again, but I highly recommend taking some time out of your day and answering these questions. Now, again, this was just part one of a two-part series, all from our conference, Grow With Video Live. You can get tickets right now for the upcoming Grow With Video Live virtual experience at growwithvideolive.com. Go there and you can see all of the ways that this conference is going to help you grow on YouTube this year and beyond. Now, next week, we're going to be diving deeper and we're gonna share real everyday YouTube creators that are growing their channel with simple strategies that you can implement on your channel. And we're gonna teach you how to turn your views into income and grow your channel to six or seven figures so you can have money for the mission. Sean's also gonna share how he went from six months away from bankruptcy to being featured on CNBC for making over $40,000 a month just from Amazon affiliates alone. You're gonna get all that and more in next week's episode. Now, if you've not left a review over on Apple Podcasts, I wanna encourage you after this episode to go there and let us know what you have gotten from this podcast. What value have you taken away or action steps that you have? Because this helps other content creators on Apple decide if this is the podcast that is for them. And I love getting to read these reviews every single week. And today's comes from Dangerously Faithful. They say the playbook for mastering social media. This is the best actionable, no fluff, step-by-step -step, and inspirational content to develop and then dominate the social media world. This podcast closes the gap from where you are to where you want to go in record time. It's like learning from a paid course, amazing content. Well, Dangerously Faithful, thank you so much for that review. And man, to say that you're learning as much as you would from a paid course means so much to me because you really do wanna make this no fluff and actionable and inspirational. So thank you so much for that comment. Again, if you've not subscribed, wherever you're listening to this podcast, make sure that you subscribe today. All right, that wraps up this episode and we will see you in the second part of this series on next week's episode. Bye. Not growing on YouTube? Learn the newest strategies for getting views and the best proven ways to make money at Grow With Video Live, a two-day virtual conference. And you can get your tickets today at growwithvideolive.com.